Hey, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got a brand new product here on the bench today. These are the new pale blue lithium polymer AA rechargeable batteries. Now, you may wonder, well, why am I reviewing batteries on the channel? Well, actually, the idea came to me last month when I reviewed the Logitech G604 Lightspeed Wireless Mouse. Now, I got a lot of criticism for my review of this mouse because I knocked it down a couple points because it used a AA battery. Specifically, it uses, well, it comes with a single AA Duracell, like you've all seen before. Now, I did not find that that was kind of the pinnacle of tech, but a lot of people said, well, you don't really know what you're talking about. Uh, you can go get an Eneloop rechargeable battery. I'm actually more than familiar with Eneloop batteries. I have about 50 in, in my various electronics. These are the four of the ones that I'm not currently using, but I've got them basically deployed everywhere throughout my electronic household. And I knew that this was not the solution for the G604. Uh, this battery is heavier and it runs at lower voltage. It's just not a performance solution for a performance product. So it just so happened that Pale Blue came to me earlier this month with a crowdfunding campaign. They're actually crowdfunding on Indiegogo. And I don't usually cover crowdfunded products, but it's, it turns out that they've been extremely successful. They've raised over hundreds of thousands of dollars and they're going to be going live with this product on Amazon later this year. That means to me, this is a legitimate product for review. So they did send me a sample of four double A's and four triple A's. Now, first thing I should mention is in my communications with Pale Blue, they've acknowledged that these actually don't hold the same quantity of charge as an alkaline battery. Um, there's an onboard charging circuit and there's other electronics they have to pack into this the smart charging device that they have built into it, the lighting they have to show you whether it's charging or it's fully charged, all that takes space. And of course they were constrained to the size of a AA battery. So the truth of the matter is I already know based on my testing that these can't hold the same quantity of charge, but what's different about the pale blue battery versus something like an Eneloop, a nickel metal hydrate, which has been around for years is that it operates at the full voltage that alkalines do, 1.5 volts per battery. And that's very important for a high performance product. When you put a nickel metal hydrate into a device that is expecting a 1.5 volt alkaline, and instead you're running it at 1.2 volts, you can actually run into problems. The performance can suffer. And actually I've found a number of devices that won't even run on nickel metal hydrate. They won't even turn on because the voltage supplied isn't sufficient. So, I hope you enjoy this review. It's going to be kind of just a brief overview of what you get with Pale Blue. I can't go into the electronics that are packed inside. I have to kind of take their word for it, but I know already based on my testing that these are going to be a great upgrade for anyone who's been looking for that next generation rechargeable double A solution for whatever electronics they use in their life. So I'm going to come back with a few details in just a moment. Charging the pale blue LiPos was as simple as connecting their four-way splitter to a USB power source. They glow red when they're charging and green when they're ready. So I pulled out my trusty Radio Shack battery voltage tester to test a brand new pack of Rayovac alkalines, a freshly charged pack of Eneloop nickel metal hydrates, and a fully charged pack of pale blue LiPos. So according to my voltage tester, the Rayovac alkalines have the most power out of the box, they are followed closely by the pale blue lipos. And then far behind, we see the Eneloops, which even freshly charged don't have a lot of capacity. I then installed these three packs into my Spectrum radio control transmitter. I found that the alkalines and the lipos hit 6.1 volts, while the nickel metal hydrates only hit 5.6 volts. So to test how long these batteries last, I decided I'm actually gonna just run this radio control transmitter and I'm going to be flying a plane here for a while. You can see that we're at 5.6 volts with brand new just freshly charged Eneloop AA batteries. I'm going to run this for about half an hour, watch how far the voltage goes down and then I'm going to switch to the pale blue LiPo batteries and do the same test. You can see just having it on we've already dropped down to 5.5 volts and just for comparison, brand new alkalines are well above six volts. So we're, we're already well below and these are just brand new out of the charger. So I've been using the transmitter for 30 minutes exactly and we're down to 5.3 volts on the Eneloop nickel metal hydrate batteries. 
All right, we have our pale blue batteries inserted. And immediately upon putting those in, we're at six volts. Quite a bit higher than the nickel metal hydrate batteries started at. A little bit low, lower than a fresh pack of alkalines, but still a good start. So let's go for about half an hour and see how these stand up. All right, it's been another half hour of use of my radio transmitter here, and the pale blue light bows are still locked at six volts. So I think that the conclusion we can make about these is that these are a fantastic choice for anyone who wants to use double A's in a high performance product that demands adequate voltage. The last aspect of my testing is to get a sense of the weight of these batteries. A standard alkaline is 23 grams. Compared to that, nickel and metal hydrides are actually slightly heavier. They come in at 26 grams. To get weight savings, you do have to go to lithiums, and the pale blues don't disappoint. They are 17 grams. For a pack of four, that's a weight savings of 36 grams or one and a quarter ounces. So I've been testing these pale blue AA and AAA batteries for the past week, and I have to say I'm incredibly impressed. I think these are a must-have for anyone who has a fleet of high power drain devices in their home. From radio control transmitters for RC vehicles to high-performance mice like this Logitech Geo 604 to high-output LED flashlights, headlamps, uh, camera flashes, and all the rest of the devices you can think of that require high output these are the batteries you're going to want. Now, I know a lot of people know about Eneloops. I've been using these for years. No, I didn't forget about Eneloops in this review. Eneloops are not in the same class at all. Eneloops can only output 1.2 volts. They do lose power over time in a stored condition, and they lose their voltage in, in, while being used in an application. So after an hour use, two hours of use, your headlamp's going to be dimmer than it was when you turn it on. Lithium batteries work completely differently. They hold their voltage output until they die and then they drop in entirely. Okay, they basically dump. But that's actually a lot better if you have a high output device. Same thing with a mouse. You don't want your mouse getting lower and lower voltage over time. That performance is going to drop. It may stutter. It may not have the same resolution of its sensor. You don't want to be feeding a high performance product a lower voltage than it's expecting. That's where these lithium batteries come into play. Now, they are $35 for a pack of four, which is double the price of Eneloops, which include actually a charger at that price. These are about $18 for a pack of four. But remember, these pale blue batteries actually have the charger built right in, so you don't even have to worry about lugging around that brick of a charger that you've had to use with your nickel metal hydrates. All you need is this four-way splitter that the pale blue batteries come with and some kind of charger. It could be your laptop, your desktop. It could be your phone charger. Basically, Everybody's got a ton of those sitting around the house. You just need to have one of those, plug it in your batteries, and they charge in two hours or less. Actually, I think the AAA is charging about an hour. That's actually faster than a nickel metal hydrate. And the most important thing about that is it's super convenient. You don't have to worry about the settings, the charge rates. You don't have to worry about overheating your batteries. Another benefit of going with these LiPos is they're significantly lighter. Each of these came in about about 10 grams lighter than a nickel metal hydride, which adds up when you're either using it in a mouse or putting in a headlamp on your head or holding it in a transmitter in your hand. Now, some applications, it doesn't matter so much what the weight is, if it's something that's sitting on the floor or on your desk, but for a lot of these applications, these products are mobile devices. They're meant to be used and moved around by the user, and that's, that means weight is significant. There's one set of applications where I wouldn't recommend them, and that is children's toys. If you've got children in your home or in your life, you know they've got battery operated products. And honestly, these are too expensive to be used in kids' products where the voltage and the output just doesn't matter that much. Another example is remote controls for uh, TVs. The one advantage I see there for these is that they just won't run down over time. So, you know, if you don't use that basement television all that often and you go down there and you get, you know, your remote's not working because your nickel metal hydrides died, that won't happen with lithium ion, but you don't need the high output for a remote. So I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not it makes sense to use pale blues for a remote control, a TV remote or your cable remote. Probably not unless you, use it, you really use them a lot and you really want that sustained output and you don't have to want to worry about, well, oh, my remote's dead again. I got to wait four hours or eight hours for it to charge. But with all that said, you know, I give this five out of five stars. I think this is a fantastic product. 
product. I'm extremely excited. It's out there on the market. This is a high quality product. It's not a knockoff. The packaging, the manual, the quality of construction, the accessory you get, you even get this plastic box, the carry case. Um, this is just top notch. And I'm just so excited that Pale Blue's entered the market. Now they tell me that these products are coming to Amazon. So far, they've just been the crowdfunding stage, but it's been a successful crowdfunding campaign. So they're going forward with the project. Um, and that means they say probably by the end of the year, you're going to see these on Amazon, $30 for the double A's, uh, $35 for double A's, $30 for the triple A's. That uh, includes, of course, the four-way splitter and the built-in chargers. I hope they make it by the holiday season. It's probably going to be pretty unlikely. And that's a shame because these would be a great throw in, you know, pack in uh, extra gift for anyone that you were giving, you know, some kind of battery operated device. But they'll have to wait and you can give them this gift next year. So with all that said, again, I'm excited that I got to introduce you to a really a brand new product category. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.